I cannot do anything better than the old masters did. When they ask me, do you still like the old masters? I say, I think they're wonderful. But my only justification is I do something different. You ask the old masters what they think of my things, it may be much more interesting. Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Tavis Leaf Glover, and today we're going to be covering Man Ray's photos, what kind of composition techniques he used, plus what kind of stylization techniques he used. So we'll look back at a few of my older photos where I applied this kind of technique, and then I'll show you how to do it to your own photos. So first off, who was Man Ray? He was a surrealist painter, hung out with a lot of surrealists, but he was also a photographer, and once he learned how he could manipulate photos in the darkroom, he became more involved with photos rather than paintings. But you'll see a lot of photos of him with surrealist paintings painters and photographers and also there was uh, quite a few photos by Henry Cartier Bresson of Man Ray and some other surrealist painters but here he is with Salvador Dali and that makes sense because his paintings kind of resemble Salvador Dali and kind of like Picasso if you'd mix those two together you'd get a Man Ray painting but really surrealist looking I was a painter before I did photography I did photography for a special reason. I wanted to photograph my own works. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't find a good commercial photographer. So I bought a camera and began to photograph my own works. Here's a photo of him when he's a little bit older. He lived to be 86, and he lived during the time when they were still using dynamic symmetry and really into composition, but then he also lived during the modern art era, which kind of threw out all that composition stuff. But we do see quite a few design techniques within his photos, and I'll cover those right now. So right here, we have a simple portrait. Start out with the normal ones first, and then we'll work into his more surrealist images. But this one's a really nice portrait. Nice figure-ground relationship. The foreground is clearly separated from the background, except for like her shoulders. But he's emphasizing this nice arabesque coming down at her head, across her neck, and then down that scarf-looking material there. So he's emphasizing that shape more than her actual body. You can see kind of her shoulders here and here, but he's hiding those with the, the dark figure on the dark background. And he's also got the aspect of view, nice aspect of side profile of face there. This one's aspect of view as well, nice figure grind relationship. Her arms are spread but also her face and it's echoing the shape of this necklace here, the side profile and then the side profile. Nice simple image there. He's got this kind of glowy feeling like ethereal feeling. Here's some more surrealist images. This one you can tell it's been manipulated but you can't really figure out what's going on. At first maybe this could have been an inverse image but if we inverse that everything looks wrong but then I took her eyes and I shrunk those down just grabbed them real quick shrunk them down and you can see that's kind of what is going on with this image her eyes look like they were enlarged so we can see that her face kind of looks a little bit more normal with her eyes smaller and then this is the original you can see how they're a lot bigger spread more apart so that's what he's doing with that he did a lot of photo composites kind of double negative type of things in the dark room and we'll see some other techniques but here's another double negative the lighting if we look at her eyes we can see the lighting's coming from below which gives them that kind of like spooky look you can see how the shadows are on her collarbone here just kind of real spooky looking this line in the background comes straight down and then right down to her nose it's a coincidence and then he's playing with the symmetry the balance of the image by using a counterpart over here this is an aspect of view of the ballerina here it's a larger version of her and then she's dancing in the background here but her limbs are spread would be even better if her arm were kind of coming out this way to be more separated from her face and then her head would be clearly separated as well but it's a nice balance there counterpart he did a lot of this sepia toning too i don't know if that was just like the style back then but i i definitely prefer black and white and we can convert that to black and white and i like high contrast black and white so if this were me editing this photo i would increase the contrast a little bit more but he has his own style and back then they had different techniques to process their images using the dark room and negatives and things like that I really like this shot. They're playing with that nice balance center composition, but it's kind of surreal like she's floating in the air and her hair is kind of draped over this, but really pretty hair, wavy, nice textures. And then we can flip it over to see her face, what she really looks like. Definitely different. The portrait is, I think, more appealing right here. The portrait and the facial features seem to have more beauty than rather when you turn it around. 
because all of our facial features and everything are being pulled down so it just looks different when it's flipped around but at this angle right here it looks really pretty it's uh kind of like it looks like a motion blur double triple negative maybe if you look closely at her eyes you see this set of eyes this one and then one on top so he could be just adding exposures could be a motion blur type of effect you can see the nose the nostrils are being multiplied as well and then not really the lips so cool little surrealist type of effect there looks like this area could have been manipulated to add scratches there kind of like a spooky image so he's working with the greatest area of contrast with her eyes and her face and then as we work down lower in the image we'll see that the contrast fades you get kind of like an aerial perspective this blending in with the background and then this is all lower contrast than the face so he's working with that they say that uh, I'm ahead of the times too I said no I'm never ahead. I'm of my time it's the others who are behind the times mm -hmm. This one, I like this image a lot. Very cool spider web effect. You have to light these spider webs just right to get all the webbing to illuminate like that. It's a very cool image. If we're trying to get this better, he could have maybe dodged and burned the around the spider a little bit more. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So if I just make this a little bit darker around the spider, it'd pop off her face a little bit better. You know, make it a lot nicer and sharper. If he could have done that in the dark room, who knows? But that would pop the spider off just a little bit more of her face instead of being lost on the right side there. In his sketch of a violin are elements which would reappear as motifs in his future work. Here's one, I like this concept a lot too. The thought of her body being a, a violin or a cello. He obviously edited this, these marks in here. And I found this one was maybe a little bit crooked, so I edited that and it looked a little bit more like to have more symmetry on there. But he's capturing the side profile of the face. He's got a nice figure grind relationship. I'm just critiquing these photos for the sake of critiquing just to show you how a really, really great image could be pushed even further with just small little compositional details. So a nice symmetry and then this is the original. This one's definitely a double exposure. You can see the front of her face here and then the side profile of the face. Nice figure grind relationship on that side profile. And then they're sharing the same eye, which adds kind of like a weird feeling, like this image right here is looking at us, but it's not, it's probably just looking this way somewhere. But since they share the same eye and this one's more prominent, it looks like this profile is looking at us in an awkward glance. So that adds to the, kind of like the visual tension of the image. But interesting photos here. I photographed Picasso in his dirty old uh, raincoat, you know, which was the same color as his skin almost. Everything was tan, and it made him look like a bronze. I like this detailed shot of this woman's eyes. She's looking up into the left, nice eyelashes. I've never seen eyelashes with the, the little knobs on the end of them. Looks kind of cool. And then the light reflecting into these little plastic balls. Looks really interesting, like tears. But if you like this kind of stuff, check out the links in the description below. I make things for artists to help them surpass their plateau and reach the master level. So check that out when you can. And I will get into another technique which is called solarization. When you think of Man Ray, you definitely can picture some of these images. He used this specific type of technique to create portraits of models and things like that. But this gave them an interesting look and I'll cover that in a couple of my photos to show you how to do it and stuff. But you can see how these were stylized. The background is like a negative right here and then the foreground's normal. So you can sometimes tell that when you inverse it. This is Command I in Photoshop, but sometimes you can tell that. But it also looks like maybe this image was cut out and placed on a textured background. Could have done it many different ways, but the technique is solarization, but you can see this some of this looks like it was inversed. Her face looks normal, but the background is kind of inversed. But nice figure grind relationship. The aerial perspective, this foggy kind of look. And then her hair is blending into the background, reducing the contrast and making it look surreal. And then this right down here looks inversed as well. You can just reverse it and look closer like this could be the normal look of the cloth there. Then when we switch it back, it looks inversed. So he did it in just little areas and you can inverse the image to try and tell. The interesting a fly up here. This one too. The hair's inverse. Her face is normal. The background looks like it's inversed and maybe like a double exposure there. Maybe this was cut out and placed onto another image. Not sure how he does it, but definitely interesting looking. This image, definitely playing with that solarization. I always found it curious how he created this dark rim around the portraits. 
like maybe he was cutting it out and it was part of his process but I'll show you in the uh, solarization section maybe it, it how he could have done it but I'm not sure how he could do it with the dark room but when we inverse this specific image we'll see where there are certain parts inversed like this is all normal okay in the original it was reversed but when we inverse the original we'll see that this is all normal and right here he's edited certain parts so in the original they're actually normal and then up here these will be normal because it's reversed here so in the original we'll see all this is normal and that edge is perhaps created by this process of inversing so we've got a normal image here it looks like it was cut out and placed over here and then the original shows us both inverted images with little sections of normal photo might sound confusing but I'll show you all that stuff this one too the hands normal the face is normal but then we've got that type of dark outline with the inverted background this one too definitely noticeable we'll inverse that and we'll see that it's actually her face is normal now so that's the original and then this is inversed cool this one I like this portrait simple nice diagonal in the hand Irving Penn did a lot of portraits that included the hands that helps add more diagonals and creates more repetition like the diagonal of the hand repeating in the bridge of her nose this shadow here side of her head but you can look at her hair it looks inversed and then her face looks normal so we can duplicate that inverse it and see what things look like so this is all normal right here and then this is normal and then he's inversed it right here on the edge this one's a great portrait nice aspect of view of the face that solarization effect blank background so nice figure ground relationship he's squint he's got a lot of contrast back here but he's emphasizing this wavy hair really interesting hair and that probably helps his solarization effect when we duplicate the image and inverse it we can start to try and figure out which areas are inversed it looks like the background could have been inversed and then you can edit certain areas out just create a layer mask and brush out certain areas you'll start to see a different image appear you can play around with this but here's an edited version kind of just where i edited certain parts of the image out to get a different look we're at the vmfa studio dark room and uh, we're going to experiment Slowly, the blacks are going to become silver, the whites are going to take on a beautiful black quality, and it's going to completely transform the image. When we see it exactly as we want it, we pull the print out and place it in the stop bath. Next, we go into the fixer. We put it in a water bath to make sure that we wash all the fixer off, and then we can take a look at it outside in the daylight. So here's a couple of images that I used this kind of solarization technique in. And I don't know if I was directly inspired by Man Ray or if I just picked it up from somewhere else. But these images are around 2011, 2012 when I was doing a lot of conceptual photography. But I would inverse the image and it would get this kind of like reduced contrast area here, kind of surrealist solarization look. And then I would mask out certain areas that I wanted normal and with more contrast. But this one definitely going for that surrealism. So the reflection is normal and then this side of the image is all inversed so duplicate that and then inverse it and you can see how this is normal and now that's inversed and then I also masked out my face so it's this is the original that I edited and posted so I masked out my face to be normal but then everything else is inversed so when I inverse that we'll see the manipulation I did and I increased the exposure of the jacket to make it look a little lighter in there so this one's definitely using the inverse solarization type of technique I masked out the face to be normal and then the hair is all inversed so we can duplicate that inverse it and when I convert it to black and white you can see a little bit easier that this is just like normal hair and it was inversed that's a color one right here I did a spider photo which was interesting I don't think I was inspired by Man Ray but I did see this spider and kind of created my own little interpretation of something similar but the spider web is between the lighting and then the camera which is over here on this side and then the lighting's on that side so that illuminates this spider web pretty well. But I did play around with the inverse type of effect and you can see how it looks there. This is just black and white converted. And then the inverse, 
I'll duplicate that and inverse it, which definitely pops out the spider web on the top, but then this is all kind of lost and you can't really tell what's going on there. So then I edited a mask on there to make this area pop off, this top area, and then blend into the lower area so you get a different look. But just play around with it if you want. These are just interesting little things. I really like how this one turned out. This is just like the original, and then I inversed it. You can see how it looks there, but then I edited out certain areas, and we got this, which looks pretty cool. And then I made sure it was all black and white. So then that's the final image, so you get that nice solarization look. Certain areas masked out, get kind of a unique look there. This one, self-portrait I took, just had handheld can inverse it and see what it looks like and then I'll show you the solarization effect how some people do it and then how I do it I just inverse it with command or control I command or control I just switches it back and forth so I do that and then I'll add a layer mask and then use the brush tool over here and just brush out certain areas and the softer you make it the more transition you'll have from inverse to normal so if you want to get the edges really fine just reduce the softness and paint around the edge you can use your pen tool if you need but it might look a little harsh go in and experiment play around with this kind of technique okay, and then you can if you wanted to you can duplicate this again inverse it again layer mask something like the eyes maybe have the eyes normal if you want you just keep painting inversing so then you can duplicate this again inverse and you know start to get certain looks but this is another version right here kind of looks interesting okay another way that people created that solarization type of effect is to use curves so I've seen this on the internet as well but just grab a curves adjustment layer place a point in the center raise the blacks all the way up and then you can create a W if you want to this lowers the black a little bit lowers the white a little bit kind of create a W shape in the curves and see what you get see if you like it right here I don't like the darkness of that it looks kind of weird looking so when we increase the lights and keep the darks all the way up and keep this part of like a like a V shape you get that darkness around the edge like man rays so it's like a harsh transition from normal to the inverse and we can see that when I click this on and off you can see just like a harsh transition from the normal image to the inverse image so that's perhaps how he got that I don't know how they do it in the dark room but that's definitely an option for you if you want to inverse this and then you can also mask out certain areas just brush out maybe part of the eye create the greatest area of contrast there if you want just all depends on your style but that's definitely another way you can do it and then another one it's the last one nice black and white image you can inverse it see what it looks like and then you can start to paint in different areas like just the face make sure it's black and white so you can create a hue and saturation layer and just desaturate it sometimes desaturating or using the black and white layer in Photoshop doesn't work as well and I mentioned that in the complementary colors video you can edit certain areas out change the opacity of your brush like maybe to 50 reduce this a little bit paint it in and then reduce it to maybe 20 you don't want the edges to be all high contrasty either so and reduce the opacity to 20 try to paint that in blend it in a little bit and you start to get certain looks but this is kind of another one I created right here increase the contrast there reduce the contrast around the edges and you can see you get certain looks different images but that's it for today guys I hope that it inspires you to just play around with some of your images and create some man ray type of effects in there but this was a suggestion in the comments below so be sure to comment if you have any other artists you want me to take a look at and I'll see if I can get to them but I'll talk to you guys later Looking back at your life, what would you say satisfied you most? I think women.